I'm going to show you how to apply MOS to any geometry in Blender 3.1 using geometry nodes. It's going to use two techniques, one where we take the normals of a surface and wherever it's pointed upwards, we're going to auto apply MOS. And two, we're going to also have the ability to vertex paint. So if we want to artistically add more MOS in certain places, we can. To do this, I'm going to start with a brand new scene. I'm going to delete everything here. And to start, we're going to make the individual moss piece that we're going to then instance a bunch. To do this, I basically just take a cube and pretty randomly, I just pull out points using extrusion. And the goal here is to get some sort of uh, mossy like texture. So once it's instanced a bunch, it has like these little gaps. Um, that make it feel like moss. Yours doesn't have to look exactly like mine. There's a lot of randomness to this. And maybe I'll just add a little more pointing upwards so we're covering each direction. All right. Something like that. And I'm going to press F3 and do a set origin, origin to center of mass, just so that when we start to rotate this thing, its pivot point is in a decent spot. So next I'm going to add the shader for this individual moss piece. Um, I'm actually going to create a light as well. Just create a sunlight, rotate it, and set the density or the strength to three so that I can preview it in, in EV while we work on this. For the shader, I'm gonna just do a color ramp using a Musgrave texture. This will allow us to get some variation on this piece of moss. Gonna just add basically two shades of green and also a dirt texture, just something that makes it feel natural, something like that. And then I also like to add a noise texture and I'll put this in a bump and bump this up to something like a hundred and lower this just to make it feel a little bit more realistic. So now that we have this, I'm going to actually just scale this down a lot and I'm going to apply it by doing control A to scale and it normalizes this. And now we want to create some sort of geometry for this moss to grow on. I'm going to just start with a cube and I'm going to put a bevel on it and I'm going to apply that. So this is our geometry we're going to add the moss to. I'm going to open up geometry nodes. I'm going to click new. I'll do moss generator and I'm going to pin this. So to generate the moss, it's similar to a lot of geometry node tutorials. You basically want to distribute points on the faces and then you want to instance on each of those points. And what do we want to instance? We want to instance this piece of moss. There we go. Now this doesn't look all that great yet. We're going to do a few things. I'm going to just zoom out a little here. So a few things, one is the scale seems a little big and then also they're all currently facing the same rotation. So it doesn't really look like moss at all. Um, so I'm going to start by adding a random, random value, do a vector, apply this into the rotation. So now we actually have each moss at a completely uh, random rotation. It's already starting to look like um, something more natural. I'm going to duplicate the random, do a float. And we're actually going to randomize the scale. So I'm going to do a scale elements and I'm going to do put the scale in here and we're going to just kind of tweak and eyeball what scale we think looks decent. Um, I think this is even too big. Obviously it depends on like the 
the scale of your model and what you're going for. But you can kind of see it's starting to look a lot more like moss. Okay, something like that. Now, we also want the geometry it's being applied to. So uh, I'm gonna add a join geometry. So at least now we can have it so uh, we can see what we're adding the moss to. And I'm actually gonna create a material for this geometry too. I'll just call it stone. We can kind of tweak that later if we'd like. All right, so it doesn't look all that great yet. There's certain things we can do like bumping up the density. Um, that might even be too much, but also in the shader, I'm gonna turn this to a shader editor. For the shader of the actual moss piece, let me just rename this too. We'll call this generator stone. So back into the moss, uh, there's one other thing I like to do just to make it feel a little more natural. And I like to add an object info. And here we have this random parameter. So if we do a, a mix RGB here and we add random, kind of see like half of the, half of the moss picks up this and then half of it's just picking up this. So here we could actually do another musgrave and, and different colors, or I could just kind of tweak it manually right now. You can see even, even that gives it a lot more variation and starts to make it look a lot better to me. All right, so the next thing we want to do is have the moss only be um, distributed to the top faces. So this is kind of our auto-generated moss. Um, in here, in the geometry node, we actually have the ability to create a selection, uh, but we want to do this automatically. So in order to do this, I'm basically just going to show you real quick. We basically want... Let me make sure. Okay, there we go. We basically want to take the normal of each of these faces and compare it with the up normal. And if the angle is low enough, we're basically going to generate the moss there. So to do this, we're going to first do a normal. So this actually currently doesn't, this would give you the normal of each vertex by default in, in geometry nodes, which isn't what we want. We actually want the faces. So to get the, to turn this normal from the, from being a vertex normal to a face normal, we actually need to do a transfer attribute and we're gonna do a vector and we're gonna add the ge this as the geometry and we're gonna make this the attribute. So now we actually have the face normal. And like I said before, we want to compare it. Uh, there's actually a compare node this somehow got disconnected. Okay, so the compare node, we want to compare a vector. We want to do the direction comparison, and I'm gonna do less than. So we're basically gonna take this normal and we're gonna compare it to a, another vector. And we know in Blender, Z is upwards, so an up facing normal would be one right there. And we can drag this into the selection. And now we have just the top faces with moss. Uh, currently it looks a little too sparse. We can kind of ramp this up however we see fit. Now that we have this, we also want to be able to vertex paint and create moss. Let's say we want moss trailing to the, the foot of this and the grass or the moss that's around it on a plane. So how are we gonna do that? Uh, we're gonna do that through a through another selection attribute. So we're actually going to just move this over here and we're gonna end up, for example, I'm actually gonna first start adding a, a math and we're gonna basically just add, here we go. So I dragged from here an empty value slot, which appears here because we created that and with that value slot, I can click this, and now it's gonna sample from a value. Um, 
And that value we can create in here as a vertex color. We can add it, color, and I can choose color here. And by default, the vertex color is all white. So now you can see the entire thing is filled with moss again. Um, currently, in Blender, or actually in all software, vertex color is dependent on how many vertices there actually are. So if we're going to start painting vertex color, we're going to want to have a lot more vertices. We could do that in a lot of ways. We could, we could just loop cut, edge select. Um, we could also go, another method would be to go in here, add a subdivision surface a simple and we can add more this way and then apply it. So now we actually have a bunch of vertices. Actually, we could even have more. I'm going to just remove this so that's not disturbing our view. Okay, so now we have a cube with a bunch of vertices. We have the vertex color. It's already put into here, but like I said before, it's, it's currently all over the place. So, uh, we want to go to vertex color, choose black, or I'm going to just click X to toggle between these two. I'm going to click paint, set vertex colors, and that basically does a flood fill. Now all the vertex colors are black and now I can kind of individually paint wherever I want my vertices to provide moss. That's pretty much it. That's the basics of it. Uh, you can obviously do a lot of cool things if you have different geometry and more complicated geometry. If you like this video, please drop a like and a subscription. It would be greatly appreciated. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Thank you very much.